with uh, AI agents. Uh, so all of us know what AI agents are because we use ChatGPT. Uh, of course, that's a siloed single purpose agent in many ways. Uh, but we are beginning to learn that uh, that it is becoming smarter and smarter. So large language models are becoming much more sophisticated and uh, uh, enabling higher value tasks. Uh, so wouldn't I have loved when I started ARC 15 years ago to have had an AI agent alongside me uh, to help me develop the business, develop a marketing plan. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss the latest NVIDIA news because we post them daily. Uh, that is what is happening now. And uh, and it's, it's very exciting. It's also lowering uh, the barriers to entry in terms of innovation. So I think we're gonna get a lot more of it as uh, AI costs continue to drop. Um, uh, AI training costs are dropping 75% per year. AI inference costs 85, maybe 95% if you believe deep seek uh, per year. And uh, so the, the cost of innovation is beginning to collapse, which is very exciting. So if we go to the next page, uh, so it's accelerating the adoption of, of hardware and software. Uh, I didn't explain on the previous page, of course we understand and a personal AI agent can help me with my shopping anywhere in the world at any time, best price, uh, lowest cost uh, delivery. Uh, so it's both personal and business. So very big idea, obviously. Um, here you can see how quickly uh, OpenAI has uh, gained traction in the purple line on the left there. Uh, this year, we think it's going to generate almost $11 billion in revenue. And that's because, uh, well, we know about the $20 to $25 per person, personal use, um, but there are higher level use cases now that are going for $200 uh, a month. And, uh, and as OpenAI actually starts making engineers so much more productive than they are now, we could see it going to 10 times uh, that amount. And you can also see uh, on the consumer side uh, how, how, quickly, um, how quickly AI hardware has taken hold. It looks very much like the smartphone adoption. Again, great conven convenience, obvious use case, and an explosion in demand. Uh, on the next page, you can see uh, what, we, what we expect um, uh, for the economics associated with uh, AI agents. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, what we believe is going to happen as the percent of consumer interactions handled by AI take off. Uh, we all have experiences of being left on hold as automated uh, chatbots, so, so they were called, <laughs> Uh, are are trying to help us, but uh, the quality has has been atrocious. We all have had experiences of just giving up. Um, you can see here if we're right, and 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 we do believe this is playing out already, that um, that we're going to save a, a tremendous amount in terms of human labor costs that will give way to. AI software cost. So it's a win-win and you can see the savings uh, in green there. It's a win-win because it's a better quality service and, uh, and we will probably lose the call centers. In fact, the, the labor decline in call centers has started to um, actually implode over the last year. So this is happening very quickly. You can see on the right-hand side, um, if we were to assume that the, the dollar cost per conversation were to drop from a dollar, let's say today, uh, down to 12 and a half cents, 
which I just gave you uh, some of the stats associated with the, the cost AI uh, cost declines, um, we could see the demand for cu customer service increase by eightfold because it will be so much better than what we have now and uh, deliver enterprise customer service savings of $540 billion. So uh, there are a lot of win-wins in here. Um, on the next page, you can see that AI, and, and Brett got to this uh, in, in his section uh, a bit, uh, so I won't go too much through it, but it is amazing that in really little more than one year's time, uh, this coding um, agent was able to complete a coding task from beginning, you know, just uh, prompt it with a text. This is what I want to do. And this is where I want to go. This is what I want the result to be. Uh, in uh, tw late 23, uh, I remember we were studying it and I was thinking at the time, wow, that's not too good. It was basically 4% completion rate, successful completion rate. Now it's more than 70%, or at least in the fourth quarter of last year. And, uh, you know, the innovation in this space is coming at us so quickly with Grok 3 um, delivering even more surprises than I, and much quicker than I think most people expected. So I am sure uh, the next time we draw this chart, it will be well above that low 70% range. And in the process, and uh, we get a lot of questions about this. Um, Thomas mentioned it in the beginning. Um, you can see that we expect on the right-hand side, um, enterprise software uh, spending growth actually to accelerate at the infrastructure level, the platform level, and the application level um, during the next five years relative to the last five years. But on the on the bottom part of that chart, you'll see that we expect the platform layer to take share over time. It already is. And I think that's one reason uh, why a, a, a company like Palantir has just taken off in a way that most people wouldn't expect. And, and, and many cannot understand the valuation uh, at which it's selling right now, but they also haven't understood and, and probably still don't expect the rate of growth, the magnitude of growth ahead that, um, uh, that, that, that will grow into that valuation. The other thing I'll say here is uh, software as a service, why is it uh, going to lose share? Um, and and here, of course, all of these numbers uh, will be adjusted with time because this is a very fast moving space. But if um, if we can move away from software as a service, one size fits all, to bringing in house to our much more productive engineers, um, the task and customizing it to our own companies. Uh, well, that is a winning solution. Uh, so uh, we're pretty excited about that. And even we uh, have done, uh, and we're a very small company in the context relative certainly to the Department of Defense where Palantir has, uh, where it cut its teeth. Um, but we've done a pilot test and uh, we can see already uh, the ways in which it can impact our business and other businesses dramatically. And here, here you can see this is uh, supercharging knowledge work. Uh, I know that the, a number of the charts are talking about how, how little we will need uh, knowledge, some kinds of knowledge workers. Um, that said, you'll see on this chart, even with rapid mass adoption of AI, and uh, and 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 significant investments. We expect the knowledge worker uh, world to grow, and we expect the the value associated with each job to increase uh, as each person 
uh, becomes much more productive. So you can see on the bottom there, I'll just uh, wrap knowing we have a lot more slides to, to go through. Uh, once again, the growth rates we associated with we associate with the overall uh, software market, you can see knowledge work or labor costs in aggregate going down and the share going towards software in the purple line there. So massive shifts, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not even gonna say once in a generation, this is once in five generations. Um, with the last time we saw this massive amount of change was as Brett said, in the early 1900s uh, when we had three innovation platforms evolving at the same time. Now we have five, robotics, uh, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and multi-omic sequencing. The latest jobless claims data showing initial claims climbing to a three-month high amid increased layoffs. So how can job seekers navigate the changing job market? Joining me here in studio, we've got Ken Coleman. He is co-host of The Ramsey Show and three-time best-selling offer. Ken, can't imagine a better person to talk to about how to navigate this labor market. On the one hand, we're seeing and hearing from CEOs that I speak to on the show this idea of just slowing down, hiring slowing because yeah. there's concern about policy uncertainty. And then you've also got a little bit of competition from the likes of AI. What is your headline on how consumers should approach this job market? Well, I think you've got to be really diligent to make sure that you've got your connections up to date. There's an old book my dad gave me when I was 17, written by a guy named Harvey McKay. And it was called Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. Mm -hmm. And that is true today as it was back then. Uh, the idea here is, is we have a tightening labor market. You just called that out, and it's absolutely true, certainly in white-collar jobs. Right. Companies are just right. sitting back, especially on today's news. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been watching the show so far. You've been covering this beautifully. So what are people going to do? They're going to kind of wait and see. Mm -hmm. And so this is a tightening labor market. So polish up the connections. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks about polishing up the resume. No, no, I want to be connecting all the time so that if I get thrown into a large layoff cut and I'm sitting there going, what do I do next? I've got relationships. Relationships are what puts you ahead of the pack if we see more layoffs. Remains to be seen, I wouldn't panic about it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is always be upskilling. So, you know, you're talking about AI and upskilling. How can I add some more tools to my tool belt? So think of your industry and think of how software, AI, how all of that is changing the game. If you are constantly paying attention to that, uh, then you're going to be at the best position possible to be able to react to whatever comes your way. And what do you say if someone asks you, should I pivot out of my career completely yeah. because of AI. How should people think about that choice? I wouldn't pivot out of it unless you should. Let's take administrative or clerical roles. I think mm -hmm. they're the ones on the chopping block. There's no question that if you're an administrative assistant or in some type of administrative customer service role, your job absolutely is in danger with the advances of AI. So what do you do? Okay, so where will AI spin off new jobs? Be paying attention to that. Every new technology does remove some jobs, but it always spins off new jobs. If you think about 10, 15 years ago, the jobs that didn't exist. So I'm upskilling to say, how can I learn AI? Because right. there's always gonna be a need for a human to work with AI. Keep in mind, AI is limited to what a human programs it to do, and many times it needs somebody to help it do what it does. So what does that look like? If you can't find anything, then absolutely be thinking about a trade skill, Mm. you know, be thinking like, about a different industry. Well, for instance, if you're in one of those roles right now, I'd be thinking about uh, electrician, plumber, mm -hmm. uh, carpentry work. Now, I mean, that's reality. And we're seeing the younger generation real world start skills. real world skills. Uh, the other thing is, is create a small business, mm -hmm. bring the human touch. Mm -hmm. So if you've been in clerical administrative work and you're really good at making sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and you're really good with people. So how can you then go into a different world where you're helping real humans do that? This is not glamorous, but I could create a uh, organizing business. Yeah. I could create a cleaning business. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ways to go meet needs. So start thinking across the spectrum what your skill set and experience will allow you to do in a different space. If you're tired of the chaos in the stock market, join our academy where we turn you into a long-term investor, not a gambler. Get buy and sell alerts, plus access to a community of over 10,000 smart people ready to back you up. For NVIDIA fans, 
our Patreon offers daily updates, exclusive content, and monthly and yearly price targets. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss the latest NVIDIA news because we post them daily.